All right, Shalom, Rastafari, Shabbat, Shalom, Senbet, Salam. This is the 32nd uh, sabbatical portion, or Torah portion, we know as the Orit, Nimbab, Nibab, our Torah readings and feedings in the cycle of our sabbatical Rastafari, sabbatical studies. Now, if you look at the chart that we have here, let's give you a, a, just a reminder right here, this particular chart, mm -hmm. and it's a free downloadable located at um, lojsociety.org under Sabbath uh, House Readings, mm -hmm. which is the foundation of our Bible studies. Torah portions. We're, we're right here on page six, right of this rate right here. So that's 32. You see 32, 32 and 33. Now next to 32, if you see right there, next to 32, what does it say? All right, next to 32, it has um, Pomerania says Besina in the open parentheses, Besina. Ter, outside, close parentheses, Terara, Terara, and it says Behar. Now there is a, an asterisk there. Now pay attention to that asterisk when you go to page 7. It says portions marked with an asterisk can be added to the following week's reading in order for the, for the proper order, as above, so below, of our Torah portions and staying in alignment with John's calendar and his clock and his time, the heavenly time. Now, in saying that, let us move forward now in this week's uh, Torah portion reading and feeding, and let's get the uh, uh, Now, I want to say a couple more words on this right here. This was the last particular teaching. Right, give me one moment. Okay, here it is. Feet, let's see. Um, again, chair. All right, here we go. This is this is where this is the book for this Leviticus, and we're closing out Leviticus. I'll right? be closing out the Leviticus studies, right, for this 2012, with a combination or a double portion, right? We're dealing with a double portion. So, if you look through the the chart and the and the Torah portion readings, the Parsha, Parshiot in the Hebrew, or the Kufloch, the various Torah portion readings and feedings, you'll see that occasionally you'll find that asterisk there. So that means where we have a double, a possible double portion. Depends on whether it's a leap year or whether it is a common year. Now, telling time, the whole Science, there's a divine science behind telling time is so crucial and in so many ways that we probably don't have the opportunity here to go through a, a full like dissertation. But there's a lot of evidence out there that's easily attainable where you'll find that even great civilizations, one of the first things they had to do was to be able to tell time. You understand? Know tell time based on the heavens and based on real movement and real signs to be able to tell time. Even something so simple as feeding ourselves in the real world. Because, you know, in Babylon, it's not really the real world. It's almost like a make believe. Certain things can go on because there's these laws and there's this order, law and order, that allows certain things to go on within that grid. But yet we're in a greater grid, which is Jah's grid. And we can see that the two are highly, are moving in highly incompatible directions. The direction of the world, the seclure, and the direction that Jah's signs, his heavenly and earthly signs are showing us. All right? So that's going to lead to the fulfillment of the judgment. But in this interim time, in this preparatory time, we have the, the time and the opportunity to get our hearts and our minds in alignment and in that righteousness. Now, it's interesting when we deal with this word righteousness from the ancient um, Egyptian or Ethiopic, we speak about the ma, 
ma, and that's one of the first sounds is mama. A baby goes mama in all, almost all languages, irrespective of race, color, whatever the people's nationality, background, ethnicity. All the babies almost universally say something to the effect of mama or mama, right? Mama and mama. Now we know in the Hebrew, Emma or the Ethiopic Emma and the Hebraic Ema is based on that Ma, that Ma vibe. Now in ancient Egypt, which was the, in the sense of the Kidner Garden of humanity, so we can trace so many different traditions and cultures and their basic principles back to Egypt. And then from Egypt was a colony of ancient Obia or Ethiopia. So now we, we're going full cipher. And this is what's happening as above. They say the heavens are going through this 26,000-year cycle. Some say this is 2012, but the Mayans foresaw. You know but we know we're in that time period. So that's why the Bible teaches us that we should redeem the time because the days, the days are evil. So we stay within the divine timing. You know what I'm saying? Such as even Noah, because the days are like Noah's days. While people were not really preparing the flood was coming about, and the flood took them all away. You know what I'm saying? Christ used that very same, the Moshiach, Yeshua used that very same example, that the days would be, one of the signs would be that the days would be like the days of Noah. See, Noah was preparing in the ark. You understand? So I and I used to be the apostles of Rastafari knowledge, preparing in the ark, and the foundation is that discipleship is getting, is getting informed. Get the information. You know what I'm saying? Um, hear the word, read the word, study the word. See, and, and at that point, you become a scribe. You know what I'm saying? You have to start writing. You know what I'm saying? Writing is so very important. And as we are learning about the Seclorum laws, in order to free ourselves up from the so called mundane of the world system and return into our true natural person. See, Rastafari, Rastafari speaks about I and I as a natural man. And on a certain level, a basic level, even a kindergarten level, we take that naturality, you know, to return to, the, you know, the, the, the Jah-made way, the way Jah created I and I. You know what I'm saying? And not to get caught up in Babylon artificiality, even with the food to the total or the vital foods, which according to the Jamaican patois of Rastafari is the Aital, returning to the true organic and even going to a level now with many of I and I to microbiotics, so forth and so on, which is still based on that basic principle of the natural. But what we're learning is that even in so-called law, both Torah, Scripture law, as well as law as is operated in this, in this mystery Babylon or the world seclorum, is, has also that very same basis of the natural person versus the artificial person. And most of y'all and most of I and I have been totally under that artificial person, 13th, 14th Amendment status as Negro, black, and colored, and, and, and been imposed upon, enslaved on another level legally with these European names of Smith, Jones, Johnson, Michael Jackson, George Jefferson, Sally Struthers, even though we may tell ones, you know, whether you're Empress Africa, but on your ID it says Sally Struthers. So when you get in a situation, and hopefully you won't, but if you get in a legal situation, you find you can't even represent yourself in court because you're using their names because by law you still are a ward of the state, and you'd be like, wait, I'm free. I thought I was emancipated. You understand? But using George Jefferson name, you know, was using the European name, then claiming to be African American, understand that right there. It is incongruous in law. Now, some will say, well, yeah, that's the point, but that's not how it operates. They don't know law. You know what I'm saying? On certain lower levels, it may not be fully applicable, but when you're, when you're in a real situation, you know what I'm saying, you find that they have old laws, old applications that just get pulled out the woodwork. And they say, yeah, we're convicting this guy based on this old statute. Well, who knew? Well, the lawyers knew. That's why when Christ, Yeshua, when he rebuked the lawyers of that time, it's the same principle, the same principles that he was seeking to demonstrate and reveal and demonstrate them even in the present time. So in the last portion, the one on, on the Rasta 
get your paper right, you know, and Rastafari and, and world citizenship, where we try to make those, those logical, real, and factual connections, key connections, so that this movement of Rastafari can truly move according to the will of the King of Kings and his Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, instead of being in the state of inertia. Because a lot of things going on which people have a zeal, you understand, a zeal for, but they have not submitted themselves. It's not according to knowledge, to the true knowledge, the true education, the true teaching of His Majesty, although it may refer to some of His utterances and speeches, but they don't even understand the foundation of government, of His government, because they have not heard or followed through. They're forgetful hearer of the word, seek first the kingdom. You understand? Of God and His righteousness. Now let's define what righteousness is and how it's connected with the law. So those who despise Torah, you understand? Those of us as lost sheep, once lost but now found, who despise Torah. And if you have a, if, if there's an obstacle to really studying it and getting this, you need to pray for real. You just need to pray that 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 Jah in the name of Joshua, that. That our Father God, in the name of Jesus Christus, our Black Lord and Savior, open up. You understand? Open up your heart and your mind, so that you can get this wisdom, so you can know the truth. You understand? So I can know the truth for myself. You understand? So help me, John, in the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christus. I mean, truly. But some people don't understand that there are spiritual barriers that are not easily perceptible, and sometimes when they do get to be perceptible, it's probably too late. You know what I'm saying? The demons are done with that, that organic structure. You know what I'm saying? So you're seeing this wildness, and you're like, I cannot understand this. But then I did see signs of this, so forth and so on. You know how that goes. Anyway, be that as it may, we want to touch on um, the two, the two um, Torah portions that make the double portion. Okay, on the double portion, we talked about the Ma from ancient Egypt, right? We have the Ma Shu, the Ma Keru. You know what I'm saying? The words of, you say the words of righteousness or the words of truth. You understand? Um, ma, in that sense, refers to truth, but also links with the idea of the ma'at. Right? Some would say the ma'at was a goddess, and, and they would um, focus on the, the outer uh, image. You know what I mean? It's, it's almost like with children. Sometimes with children, they have to give you kind of cartoon, you know, like figures. When you look at the hieroglyphs, they were very advanced because man then was becoming civilized and, and began to understand the world around and within him through symbolic logic. But then there were others who, who did not have that understanding and took the outer or the exoteric, you understand, for the esoteric. They could not overstand. They had an understanding, you understand, but they didn't have an overstanding. So that's where we get to the point even in um, the Torah where it speaks about um, the images, you understand, the images of anything in heaven above or below as God, because in Egypt, ancient Egypt, at that particular point in time, certain of the religiosity or spirituality had downgraded or degraded to a point where that bondage that the Bible speaks about was a spiritual bondage. You understand? Just like a lot of people can know this knowledge about sovereignty and say, yes, yeah, right and exact, but they won't act off it. Why won't they act off Because they're afraid. What makes them afraid? Because they still are worshiping foreign gods. You see what I'm saying? In their heart and their mind, they may not think so. You understand? But they're like, oh, it can't be done or so forth. But even though they will admit to you that it's right and exact, but some, some spook, you understand, has spooked them away from reclaiming, you understand, their their sovereign, their God-given, their natural right. So when we talk about righteousness, righteousness is a legal term, actually. Righteousness means in a biblical, scriptural, theological way to be in, in right relationship, to be in right relationship with God. The Israelites had fallen to such a point, our um, lost sheeple, who now are Negroes, Blacks, and Coloreds, under foreign names, false god names, have fallen to such a, 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 a level that no amount of sacrifice or propitiation or whatever could, could, could connect that breach. There was a breach, and it's through the Moshiach, Yeshua, known as Yehoshua, Yehoshua, some might say. But Jesus Christos, it was only through him 
they came to save his people from their high crimes and treason against the government of God and against the, 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 the covenant, the, the Benai Barit, the Al Kidan. Now, that's the connection between the ancient Judeo and the Christian, which we see a, 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 very, a very perfect um, a simulation of the Judaic with the true Christian in Ethiopia and in that royal or imperial example that we have in our 3,000 plus year um, story or history that's also contained as the foundation of the Kibra Neges, or the Queen of Sheba, and only some minulet. Because it tells us there that the kingdom of David was renewed in the highlands of Ethiopia, in that roof of Africa. And now this all connects also with the Torah portion that we have before, 32 and 33.